hello everyone, welcome back, and uh, it's another episode on uh, Bitcoin trade. Um, I'll try to pick up from the last episode. Um, so, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, scammers and fraud. Um, I've already had experience with it, and there might be a chance if any of you guys are going to get into um, Bitcoin that you'll you'll probably experience the same thing, and um, so I'll go over that, and then I'll also go over something I, I kind of spaced out on from the last episode, but um, we'll go over. Excuse me, here. Let me push this back up a little bit. Here. There we go. You can see a little bit better. Okay. Um, I'll go over. Uh, how even though um, a lot of people think of Bitcoin as a way of getting away from the banking system, if you're a trader and you, you're trading US dollars for Bitcoin and Bitcoin for US dollars, um, just like how you need to protect your wallet with your Bitcoins, you also need to protect your money from scammers. Um, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll go over that for the, uh, the need to use the current banking system and, and, I, and I'll talk about how you can use it to your advantage how you can use your bank finally to make money instead of the bank using you to make money so so there's some good things and, and so I'll go over that on this episode and then um, I'll, I'll also try to go over more about uh, Wayne, uh, Main Street and Wall Street um, the market in general, um, not not the market as far as the exchanges or anything, but you know the real world market where you are buying and selling from uh, peer to peer or person to person. And then the last thing I'll talk about is um, mining pools, um, mining rigs. Not specifically about them, but um, how you can find or try to find these people and what it means for you as a uh, finding these basically their suppliers of Bitcoin you know as they uh, they own these mining rigs they, they become part of the network in which we can send our Bitcoins you know they're rewarded with Bitcoins and so uh, I'll give you some my experience with that as well so um, so first thing we're going to talk about is, is scammers People scam. So, um, all right, let's let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, usually, uh, you know, because the way how how Bitcoin functions, um, a lot of people have same. It's the same old trick with a different, you know, just just a new uh, vehicle of doing it, which is Bitcoin. But basically, you know, um, they're, they're using credit cards or something like a PayPal or a third-party payment system in which they'll, they'll try to, you know, get you to pay or send their Bitcoins for the, for that through the third-party payment. And, and what happens is, um, just like a little background, you know, I, I, I was a victim of identity theft and I learned a lot how people can um, manipulate your information um, and basically uh, can can get credit cards in your name all this stuff you know um, but I had a person steal my identity um, it was quite a battle uh, that person finally got arrested. Um, you know, the uh, U.S. Justice Department sent me letters because I was a victim. And, you know, for, I, th I think there was 20 other victims in this credit card fraud. And uh, that's probably like about maybe $100,000. It was like a three-month period where he was, this person was just on a on spree, you know, with the credit, fraudulent credit cards, right? Well, you know, he got caught. 
eventually. Every, every, every crime that's committed usually, typically, it, no matter how good you are, will lead a trail back to you. Um, so, uh, it just, you know, unfortunately, it, it takes time to catch these scammers. But, um, and, or criminals, and but eventually a trail. There always, there's always a trail, and it it does lead back to you. So if you're a criminal, uh, you're a scammer, trying to, you're watching this. Um, you know, don't waste your time with me. Uh, you're probably gonna get caught if you if you fuck around with me because, uh, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm. I'm. I must be bad luck for for scammers and criminals because. Uh, you know, I'll put an episode on that on that tire slashing one more time if anybody hasn't seen that. But finally caught the person or the kid turns out to be just a minor um, slashing tires around the neighborhood. I mean, you're gonna get caught. So. Hopefully you're watching this video because you don't want to scam anymore. I'm talking to scammers if they're watching. Um, not not you honest people out there. But uh, if you're a scammer and you're watching this and you're trying to figure out how to how to scam a little bit better, I hope you stop you know thinking that way and realize you can actually make pretty good damn money trading bitcoins out in the open, honestly, legitimately. Okay. You don't have to scam anymore. For, for for all those people who scam, you don't have to scam anymore. You can you can actually trade bitcoins, sell bitcoins. I'm sure you're trying to sell bitcoins. So, for for all those other people who who are honest and all that, don't take third party payment system offers. Don't take PayPal or anything like that. Don't take a credit card. Um, and. Uh, I also talk about how how you can profit off of scammers, all right? Because uh, you know you can um, you can scam the scammers, ironically, um, and and you won't feel bad when you take all their money because you know they're scamming you. So, um, anyways, I'll I'll leave the scammers alone for now because I'll get back to them later. But just just you know the best way to fight off scammers or people who are fraudulent is, and this is going to be coming to my next point, is using the current banking system. Alright, so I'm sure you all bank somewhere. Um, you know, if you have money, you typically have a bank account. So, uh, now, the reason why you want to use a banking system, you know, especially if you're selling, you know, bitcoins, usually you're selling bitcoins is, um, a lot of times, um, not only will you do like in-person cash deals, like hard cash deals, um, after a while, like I said, if you're legitimate, um, you'll start getting into investors and just other people in general, and after a while, you, you'll get busy. You're not going to have time to meet, you know, five people, drive them across all over town for a hundred bucks uh, for bitcoins. So, you know, you have a bank. I, I, I bank at Wells Fargo. You know, some people bank at Chase, whatever. Um, instead of the bank making money off of you, you can start making money off the banks. And um, you can utilize all those branches that your bank has. They're all over the place. Wells Fargo is all over the place. Chase is all, all over the place. Um, so now what I do um, is I basically do wire transfers or cash deposits only. If someone if someone says, "Hey, do you do PayPal or uh, Venmo um, or something like a Venmo?" Um, you know, those are like third-party payment providers. Um, I would avoid them. You know, if someone someone mentions PayPal, Venmo, or or some other third party, they're probably they're most likely probably scammers. Um, just to give you a heads up, another way you can um, you can test if someone's if they're a scammer or not is offers a ridiculous like if they want to buy from you, 
offer something ridiculous. Offer, you know, Mount Gox plus 50. You know, something that you know nobody would take. Like, or Mount Gox plus 100. You know, tell them, like if Mount Gox was like 900 right now, tell them while well, you're selling it for 1,000. And see what they say. Like, I wouldn't buy it. If, if you wouldn't buy it, why would somebody else buy it? You know, so offer something ridiculous. If you ever encounter anybody new trying to hit you up or something, uh, especially people you haven't traded with, or if they're if they want to sell to you, right? If they want to sell to you, um, offer them something ridiculously low. Uh, another scam is where where people say, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm into Litecoins. Litecoin Litecoins is another cryptocurrency. It's also here." Um, You'll see it on uh, Bitcoin Wisdom. There's a index for Litecoin and U.S. dollar. Right now, it's about twenty-three dollars and eighty cents. So, so another scam would be um, you'll get approached um, either through local Bitcoins, like I, I mentioned, as far as advertising yourself as a trader. Um, you know, doing exchanges out there or over over the, over the counter. You know, um, trades or anybody. I don't know. I mean, you may get hit up out of nowhere from somebody. So, <clears throat> um, but the the scam, this particular scam is kind of a little different. You know, like they'll try to sell you a Bitcoin, right? But they don't want, you know, what they want is they don't want money. They want Litecoins, supposedly. Um, that, that's another scam. So, for some reason, you'll buy a Litecoin, and you know they'll you send it to them, and then they never send you the Bitcoin. You know, uh, the way they do it is they use um, they use a wallet, and they may say, "Hey, uh, we, you know, let's not use localbitcoins.com. Let's, you know, I'll, I have a wallet, and I'll give you the password, but I have the private key." And, and when you get into private keys, it gets kind of weird, confusing, but basically private keys allows you to spend your money, right? Spend the Bitcoins, allows you to send them. Uh, so the scam is that, oh, well, I have a wallet, and, you know, usually the nice thing about uh, Bitcoins or Litecoins is uh, they're all public. They have a public ledger. So, you know, you ask for their address key and, and you know, see if they have any Bitcoins. Typically, these guys don't even have bitcoins, all right? They don't have money. That's why they're scamming, and and they're kind of stupid because if 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 they watch my video series on bitcoins, instead of putting all that effort into like scamming and basically um you know s s trying to attempt to fraudulently take money or bitcoins from from the general public, um. I, it doesn't make any sense, you know. They they put that much work into being a criminal, when if they did the same amount of work, they could be legitimate. I pause there because I wanted the uh, the scammers who are watching to think about that. Um, so, anyways, I'm gonna get a drink of soda here. Uh, excuse me, why? Everything I do is uncut, by the way, guys. So uh, let's take a commercial break. Uh, I'm gonna take a little sip here. Oh, okay, that was refreshing. <coughs> All right. So sorry if this is graph is not coming out good. Oh, it's not like you need to see this. It's really what you need to hear. So. All right, so now that's that's the scammers, okay? So you'll see stuff like that, like um, they'll say, "Hey, we'll do an escrow outside." This is how I do it: the escrow. I'll 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 you know open up a wallet. You can have the password and everything, and and uh, but I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the private key, so you can't spend the money. That's I don't know that much about you know private keys or anything. Okay, that's better. But uh, I do know you need the private key to spend your money. You don't ever want to give your private key away. Um, the thing about wallets is 
it's I don't know how to explain it. Um, I'm not an expert in, in in this technology, but from from what I understand, you know, you can take any private key um, and import it into another wallet. So you can take any of your wallets that you have um, and import it into another wallet. So you can take the address key and import it to another wallet. Is what I'm saying. Um, so you can, uh, you know, when I when I say you could take physical possession of your bitcoins, you, you kind of do and you don't. Uh, you take possession as far as it's it's more of like an intellectual property that you bought. It's kind of like that. It's not something really tangible per se. Okay. So it never really. Um, uh, the ownership is maybe registered. If you, if you have an offline, it seems like the ownership is registered to your wallet, right? The ownership is registered. That's kind of what's what's on the wallet, um, according to you know the public ledger. Not that there's an actual physical, or maybe there is. I don't know, but it's it's kind of hard to tell with digital technology. You know, it's like, for example. Um, this is a micro drive here. Um, actually, the micro drive goes in here. So there's a little spot for it, if you can see that. So the tiny little micro drive goes in here. So I can put this. So you see the micro drive is not not in here. There's something nice slip in here. But uh, basically, um, theoretically, I guess you could. You could have a million bitcoins in this little thing. And your wallet could be in here. The program, multi-bit, I haven't tried this yet, but I, I'll probably do this in the future. But you can definitely store your wallet here. And, um, you know, you could have a, m a million coins. You would never know it. But the thing about the wallet, whether you have an offline or online, is um, it can be synchronized with the network uh, with the public ledger so that's what it's really doing when it's offline the access to spend your Bitcoin is offline the program is could be within here um, that's that's kind of uh, if that's confusing I'm sorry maybe I shouldn't get into it that much but um, we'll get back to to what we're talking about so um, if anybody who tries to do an escrow outside of um, you know local bitcoins, that'd be at your own risk. I don't I don't know why you would do that. Um, I don't do that at all with anybody I don't know. I wouldn't do that with anybody that I did know. Um, the best way to to sniff out scammers from real people is basically tell them to do tell them to complete two trades. Uh, whatever your minimum is, if your minimum is one Bitcoin or half a Bitcoin or some kind of money value like 500 or 1,000, tell them to do two com completed trades with you with no problems. All right? And on top of that, no third-party payment, no credit cards. And there's only two ways that you take money if, if you don't want to meet them. And typically these people, scammers, don't want to meet you. All right, so that's the first clue. If they don't want to meet you, if they want to do some kind of online deal or, or third-party payment, uh, be sus a little suspicious. So, so um, the thing, the reason why I say you you need the banking system, the financial system, is um, scammers don't like to go to the banks. And first of all, they don't have the money to go to the bank and, and make a deposit. That's one reason. Second reason is there's a lot of security at the banks. They got cameras. They have to fill out a deposit slip, which basically uh, you'll get a fingerprint, uh, you'll get some handwriting, um, you know, there's they got cameras at the tellers now, so you're going to get a picture of a face, you know, and if, if they actually do do a deposit, I mean, you know, you got some, some record of this person, right? Um, and you know, cash deposits are pretty reliable. Uh, once you, once that person puts the money in, 
you know, he can't go come back a minute later and say, hey, I made a mistake. Uh, I need that money back. You know, they, they can't do that. All right. Um, so, and then wire transfers. Okay. Well, first of all, wire tra you have to have a bank account to do a wire transfer. And, you know, with all these new laws now, because of 9-11, um, man, they are scrubbing down on those bank accounts. Uh, you know, you can't open a bank account, you know, like you used to, nonchalant, you know. Um, they take that stuff serious now. They, they don't want criminals... Um, I, I should I should say reiterate that they don't want people opening bank accounts to engage in criminal activity, um, mainly mainly because nine eleven through through funding of terrorist organizations that kind of stuff you know from from what I did my research right but so you know scammers don't do that because you know, you got to provide a real ID your real name, a fingerprint, you know, all that, a real address. So scammers don't like doing that. And plus, scammers don't have money anyway. That's why they're scamming. And that's, you know, they'll never wire you any money. So so that's a good defense against scammers. Um, so that's, that's why you need the banking system. And the banking system... Um, you know they'll take your money, and they're the uh, people think. You know I had I'm trading with one person who who doesn't have any bank accounts for some reason. Um, you know they're they're uh, whatever fear of. You know the money disappearing, whatever the reason. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, the, um, if if you want to be legitimate, and you're you're looking to you know, really do this as a way of living, which is possible. And you, and you want to do what I was talking about, um, working with large investors. You have to be legitimate. You have to have a banking account because, um, you know, like half a Bitcoin or, you know, $500, $300, $100, those are, you know, you'll do cash deals in person that way, you know. Um, especially for someone who you don't know. Uh, usually people that I trade with for the first time, um, you know, for small amounts, I like to meet them in person. Or, or we'll, go, we'll go do it in person. If they don't want to do it in person, I tell them, hey, make a deposit in my bank account. They give me your address key. You know, I know I'm honest. So, so here's the thing about using the banks and the reason why you need to use the banks. Um, people who are wealthy uh, typically don't do th things in cash, all right? So when you do a Bitcoin trade for whatever, $10,000, um, well, you know, maybe, maybe some wealthy people will have $10,000, but they, it's, you know, why would they do that when they could just wire you the money? You know, I mean, it's well, walking around with $10,000, $100,000, million in a briefcase, that's that's ridiculous. That's criminal activity ish, you know, but not illegal. Okay, uh, it's I guess perfectly fine. You know, if you have that much hard cash on you and that's what you want to buy with, it's nothing illegal about it. But it's just suspicious. Um, so um, it's just you know for people out there who are gonna get into this cash, hard cash, in large amounts, kind of suspicious. So, anyways, um, uh, people don't do that. Uh, what they do is they'll wire you money, they'll write a check, uh, deposit directly from their account. If, if you are, the, if they bank at your bank, well, they can just go into their bank and say, hey, uh, I want to transfer this amount to this person's account. And it'll be done. And it's relatively quick. Um, as far as once the payment goes through, it's it's pretty much yours. So anytime a cash deposit or a wire, once it shows up, and and if you do, if you want to wait, you can wait at least a, a day.
but typically it'll show up the next day on your um, on your account and if you bank online you can just see it right away and you can um, you know then uh, if you you know like I said if you do something outside of local bitcoins or within local bitcoins you know this is something you can you can see if you have online banking if you're going to be doing uh, cash deposits or wire transfers so you can see those right away and you know I've never had any wires be reversed I've never had any cash deposits reversed uh, because you can't it's hard to do once it once it goes through it's it's gone uh, so you know the banking system is very similar to how Bitcoin works in some ways you know uh, the only difference is uh, you know the banks have the hard cash where Bitcoin doesn't have anything like that you, know, you can send money all over the world um, you know it's a number on a computer kind of sounds familiar right money is also a number on a computer but the difference is you know Bitcoin will always be digital and money well money can be hard cash or electronic cash so so um, okay that concludes the part about the the need for the f to use your banking system okay that the banking system will protect you against scammers it will also open the doors for you to um, for for larger volume trades uh, because uh, wiring money is probably going to be the most common way you're going to get these or that I would recommend once you build um, a reputation and trust uh, as a Bitcoin supplier okay so uh, next thing I'm going to go over now is the uh, Main Street versus Wall Street um, let me uh, I'm going to Hold on here, I'm going to make a quick pause here. Um, I'll be right back. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, sorry about uh, cutting out there. The battery got low, and uh, well, a day has passed. But uh, I kind of want to leave where I left off. Um, it's going to be really short. It's not going to be too long, but... Uh, I believe I left off um, Wall Street versus Main Street. Uh, talk about those two particular markets. Um, Main Street being basically uh, what it is, just you know, uh, the everyday use uh, as a form of exchange. Um, you know, like like kind of how U.S. dollar is right now, and how that can um, provide a service. A, a real service um, to the average average person and um, how it works for me is or how I like to think about it is you know there's a lot of uses that on a daily basis that you can use uh, Bitcoin um, a lot of ways would be just just the fact that you can use um, any any individual can essentially become um, a bank just simply by participating in the use of Bitcoin and by trading it, uh, using it as money, uh, buying things with it, etc. And then on the merchant side, um, accepting payments. Uh, could be another source uh, for uh, commercial enterprises. Um, just in the fact that it's uh, it's had some very hardcore user base. Um, and the other thing is, that as, as as a person like me who is essentially, as I said in the previous episode, becomes a market maker. Um, and the reason, you know, I not only like I've chosen to just not only trade with the exchange on Bitcoin, but also uh, basically uh, provide Bitcoins to market uh, for uh, the public, uh, mainly Main Street, to be used. Uh, and what it does is it, uh, I guess, I, I do have a personal interest in it because 
the more I market bitcoins out in Main Street, the more valuable or or the or the rate of value. I don't know how to say, it, but uh, as more people would start using it, you're going to see uh, an increase in the price of Bitcoin dramatically. I I, I believe um, because this is starting to be very exponential in how the value is going to rise. And, and I'll get to a later point where I explain uh, why I think it would go to ten thousand, a uh, hundred thousand, a million. And, and you know, if I live that long, uh, it may just keep on going to infinity. So, um, and, I, and I'll tell you why in a later episode, of course. But I just want to kind of get, you know, um, just kind of mm -hmm. let, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm just kind of let, you know, the, how, how we can serve uh, our every... How every anybody who has Bitcoin can benefit from more and more Bitcoin being used out in Main Street because it's just going to increase in value by doing that. And then um, you know, both in just transacting, making money on transactions, um, purchasing things, and then as as people start using it, they'll also realize that the value of Bitcoin it's going to go up. So whatever they bought in at, even if they use it as money, what they'll realize is they're going to spend less and less bitcoins for the same thing. And it's going to, it's going to like, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, and then you know, they might trade, they also trade in it, they can also start investing themselves. You know, it becomes a lot of things to someone who understands what Bitcoin does, how it's used, what it really is, okay, and then you know it, it it's a form of, um, I guess, uh, you know, I hear this word a lot, like uh, freedom, it it it's freedom, you know, and all that, and to some degree, I, I understand what some people are saying, but it's it, it's it'll let anybody who chooses to participate, uh, just the fact that they're participating. And, and choosing to give up, you know, their paper money for something that they feel it's it's, it's more valuable than than any fiat currency. And I'll get into uh, again another episode on why, you know, why Bitcoin, where where you know where Bitcoin comes comes in place, where where the value of Bitcoin comes in, what determines the value of Bitcoin. And then uh, why I think the price of Bitcoin will go to infinity. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of you, when you're here, will, will understand this. Some of you may not understand it. Anyways, it doesn't really matter to me whether you do or don't. I know what I'm going to do. So let's, uh, let's go on to, like, Wall Street. Now, when I mean Wall Street, I, I people think of New York, but I'm, I'm mostly talking about... Um, tapping into, you know, in investors, more high net worth uh, people that, um, you know, I don't, I don't know of any way you can do this. Um, all I know is that if you are honest and trustworthy, uh, you're not going to have any problems finding, uh, you know, very wealthy individuals who will buy uh, Bitcoin from you. Um, so I, I have to thank all the, again, I, I know I'm bringing up all the scammers out there, but I have to thank all the scammers out there who who make it so easy for me um, to to trade Bitcoins out in out, out in the streets, uh, Main Street, Wall Street, not not in a corner somewhere. Okay, I know I, I keep. I think every episode I keep I kept saying that when I say you know you can deal out in the streets. I'm not talking about a corner. I'm talking about Main Street and Wall Street. Getting them, getting Bitcoin out into the public in the Main Street for use, actual real use, 
and also um, allowing an individual to choose uh, how they want to use Bitcoin, uh, money, financial instrument, whatever the case. So, and again, that applies also to the uh, investors. Uh, but the only difference is, of course, they they do kind of have a leg up a little. They got a lot of money. Now, if if for these investors, they know one thing for sure, and, and the reason why they invest in other things is they they, they realize that the value of money is basically um, going down the more they sit on it. So so that's why they spend the money. They're forced to spend money to keep the value of, of what they earned. And, you know, if, if you really understand what Bitcoin is and what, what it does, uh, you know, it's, it's totally, you know, it has the same properties as the U.S. dollar or any fiat currency. And, and, and the difference is, you know, money can be, you know, printed. There's an unlimited, you know, to infinity that it can just, you know, they just mm -hmm. keep printing it. It's just paper for the most part, and, I, and I'll try to get into why that, how that fact is going to increase the value of Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is the exact opposite of money. Even though they're properties of the same thing, uh, paper money, fiat currency, and 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 Bitcoin are actually inverse of each other, in my opinion where you have a, a limitless supply of money versus a limited supply of, of Bitcoins. And at some point, they're going to cross, you know, these, these I'm imagining a chart where, where the dollar in supply and demand is going down. And, uh, but the, the supply, uh, how should I say, so there's more dollars and the value of it, the true value of it is going down, I should say. So there's more and more m money being created, uh, pushing down the value. And where Bitcoin is, um, you know, reaching a point where no more is going to be made. It has a limit. And between those two things, and I'll explain in another episode, it's probably going to take another episode to explain it, um, but if you do understand it, and then you start seeing the light, you'll start understanding, like, even if you know traded Bitcoin, if you just can get some Bitcoin right now, um, you, you probably, uh, first of all, just having a Bitcoin allows you to, um, how can I say this, uh, fight off the devaluation of, of, uh, fiat currency so it does do that so even if you didn't do anything but it I believe by the time you be rid you know if you give it some time a couple of years by the time you you know realize remembered you had it and maybe you wanted to use it to buy something or to sell it or to maybe start investing or trading you'll be you may be surprised how much it's it went up so you know Sorry. Again, I'll cover that in, in another episode. Uh, right now, I just want to finish off the points. Um, so, Wall Street. So, well, anyways, i got to cut this short. Uh, it's running too long. It's going to be too part here. Last thing I want to briefly talk about is uh, how do you get rich in touch of, uh, um, of miners? You know, how, do you, how, how can you do that? Well, uh, first of all... Um, Scammers not need apply because you need money, like real money. Um, second is uh, you you have to have um, honesty and be uh, trustworthy. So something that um, unfortunately uh, scammers don't have any of those qualities. So. Um, you know, when you do trades with people, you don't know who you're doing trades with. And, you know, somebody has to bring the Bitcoins out to market. So, so when you're trading, 
you have to keep in mind you don't know who you're trading with you really don't I mean even if you meet him in person you're like oh I know this person you really don't so you know be honest with your trades um, another 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 thing is you know that the side effects of Bitcoin is that you honestly and I and I and I'll use that word so many times honesty honesty be honest all right um, it helps build honest honesty trustworthy trust it builds trust with other people it really does um, where I, I think um, you know with I guess that's the side effect. I mean, unfortunately, there's some people that uh, abuse that trust, and unfortunately, they will never ever realize uh, what they missed out on uh, the the possibility of of becoming um, well, independent of of uh, a financial debt. So, anyways, so if you ever you don't really find them, they find you. Uh, I'll tell you that much. I mean, uh, you never know who you're doing a trade with. So, uh, you know, it's not that hard to find someone who's not honest with, with trades uh, with Bitcoins. Actually, you don't even really have to go that far. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll probably find you. And they, if they think that, and, and depending on, you know, if you have a, if you understand what, what Bitcoin is and, and you uh, understand how to market and or bring out to market Bitcoins in a way that it's going to increase its value, that's what typically I would hope a miner would look for. But really with, with the basic qualifications that you can get in touch with a miner or, or a mining pool is if you have a lot of money because they want to sell it to you. Uh, that's probably the most quickest, easy way. Um, of course, they'll they'll contact you, but if you if you put something out there that you're a big time buyer, uh, you'll probably get contact, but you won't know. That's that's what I'm saying. That's why it's important to be honest, be trustworthy. Scammers not need apply, since you don't have any money. All right, so. Uh, so that's just a quick thing. I mean, you don't you don't find them; they find you. All right. Um, so uh, and you know, they they may talk to you if you don't know who they are. All right. It, it, remember, it's a group of people. So you'd be trading with three different people. That maybe they're just testing you out. You never know. But uh, if you understand what Bitcoin is, you understand the power of Bitcoin. Yeah, you understand a lot. Of, if you understand a lot of these, of what I'm talking about. Then, then you know it shouldn't be hard for for them to make uh, to reach out and contact you and say, hey, um, you know, this is, we're we're a group of miners and you know we're looking for for someone like you to market or buy or whatever. But you know, minimum requirements is is if you have a lot of money and you, and you're willing to buy a lot, pretty much. Okay. So let me wrap this up and I'm gonna probably put the two videos together. Uh, sorry about the cut out and cut in, but. Um, I guess some of the next things. Oh, that that was me. That was my dog. Okay, so kind of embarrassing. But the next thing I'll talk about um, is, you know, um, I'll talk about how um, in, in the next episode why I believe that Bitcoin will go up to infinity. And and I'll try to explain it, and you know, hopefully it'll make sense to some people. Maybe it won't make any sense to anyone. Maybe I'm just crazy. Um, but at least you get to hear me out. And so I'll, I'll, I think that'll take up a lot of a lot of time, or maybe not. And uh, I don't know. I'll see what else I can I can think of uh, on my next episode. Um, you know, we'll see. But mainly, I do want to talk about, uh, in in really specific detail, where where the value of Bitcoin comes from, 
and and why I think Bitcoin is gonna go up to I, I'll, I'll just say infinity um, and and you'll see the reason after I give you the reason why I mean I think you, you might be able to understand why the price of Bitcoin can can possibly it, it could go up to infinity all right and uh, thank you for watching uh, please uh, comment like dislike even do a video response um, did I say like or dislike already I think I did anyways uh, thanks for tuning in until next time um, I guess just just keep watching thanks appreciate it bye